Welcome back to my channel. This is the fifth video in a series on how to design a PRS electric guitar in Fusion 360. It's been a while since I've recorded a video, but I have made some, uh, what I think, some improvements actually in the way that I draw the body. So this first body video is going to produce the outline um, using a photo and then we're going to get into carving the top essentially. So let's get on with it. Okay, so I've opened up the file that we've been working with in these videos and since it's been a while I'm going to take a look at this and see what we've got. Um, we do have a clean timeline down here and we're at the end of it. So it looks like we created the neck and including the headstock and a cap on the headstock but we did not create the fretboard. Okay, so I also want to know where this is in space. So I'm going to turn the origin on and we can see we've got a red center line that goes right down the middle of the neck. And this origin, this green line, is quite a bit away from the neck. So I suspect that's where the bridge is positioned. Um, so I'm going to go measure, start at this green line here if I can select it. There it is. And go to this line, which I think is the far side of the nut. But roughly, it gives us 25 and a quarter, which is, um, you know, certainly a scale length or close to it. So I'm pretty sure that's what that, you know, where the, the neck is positioned so that the bridge should be right here. That'll be helpful in um, positioning the photo that we're about to import. So... Let's first make a component, and we'll call that the body. And that's activated. Um, okay, so now we're going to insert a photo. And this is the front of body front. This is the front of a PRS guitar that I got off the internet. So I'm going to insert that. And it's asking me where I want to insert it. Uh, I have to select a face. Now, depending on the face I select, I may get outside of this body. And I really want that um, canvas to be inside the body. So let's open up the body. And really, the only thing we can do is select an origin here that would um, force Fusion to stick that canvas into this component. So, let's see. That's the proper plane we want, and it's inside the body component. So, now we get our canvas inside our component, and I can collapse this origin. So, that's a nice little trick. Um, a lot of times, you know, say I had selected the top of the neck as the plane to put this canvas on, it would not go inside the body component. Um, it might go inside the neck component because I used the neck component as the spot, you know, the, the reference plane. Okay, so let's zoom in a little bit to see this photo. We can see a couple of problems. It's one, it's wildly out of scale, and two, it's not rotated properly. So I'm going to right click on the canvas itself and go to edit. And first thing, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And then let's take a look at it this way, flat on. Um, I can use this diagonal scaler to proportionally scale this thing up. And we can kind of see the neck at the same time. So if I bring this upward um, and do a little bit more scaling. That's roughly the right size. All right. So let's do an OK. Another thing we want to check is to see if this guitar is plumb, you know, if the strings are, are, are absolutely vertical, um, and then align it horizontally so that we're in the center of that uh, origin, um, and then we can position it for the bridge. So in order to do that stuff, I think we're going to need a nice plumb line. So we're going to actually create a sketch here. 
or inside body component. So create sketch on this top plane. I'm going to go get my line tool. I'm going to turn construction on and start from the origin and just do a horizontal line here that goes outside the photo. And I'm going to do another one starting at the origin, making sure it's horizontal. And I'll click on that. So let's go ahead and rotate up. So now we've got this nice guideline. So I'm going to finish my sketch and I'm going to go ahead and name the sketch. We're going to have a series of guides. This is just the first one. Okay, so let's take a look and see where our strings are in relation to that vertical line. And you can see that the string down here at the 24th fret is almost touching and it's quite a bit away, way away here. So I'm going to right click on the canvas and go to edit and then I can use this little rotation tool but we don't need to rotate it much so I'm actually going to type in a value instead so if I say one degree let's take a look at that that is actually rotated a little bit too much so let's try 0.9 degrees that looks pretty good to me um, so I'm going to accept that but now we also have to position this horizontally. So let's see if we can do that at the same time. First of all, let's put it right on the string and we can see uh, our rotation probably was a little too much here. So let's go back to the rotation tool and say we're going to do negative 0.1. Let's see what that does. That looks great. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do an OK here and come back in so I don't lose that. So edit the canvas. And now we've got the proper rotation. Let's um, align this so that it's right between two strings. So I can use my horizontal translation button down here. OK, so this vertical line is centered between our two inner strings. So the guitar is centered. And now we want to show our origin. Here's this green line. Remember, that's going to be our bridge position. So using vertical only, let's move the guitar down. And I'm going to say that that kind of between the two inner saddles is close enough for our bridge position. So I'm going to OK here. All right. So that actually looks good. We can see the neck extending, and that looks to be... Um, kind of proper dimensions there. All right, so now we have the canvas in a position and size that we can trace over. So before drawing the outline on top of this photo, I want to draw a series of horizontal and vertical lines that will be guides, essentially. So um, I don't have to make decisions while using splines. I'll know exactly um, destination points that I'm shooting for. So I've already got this guides um, uh, sketch, sorry. Um, so I'm going to double click and edit that sketch. There we go. And I'm going to put the lines in that sketch. So we've already got a line, a center line effectively. So that's one of our guides. I also want to do a horizontal line uh, across the lower bout. So basically the widest part of the guitar. So I'm going to go make a line. Um, I'm not trying to intersect the guitar itself, you know, the edges of the guitar. But I am trying to make, well, I am making sure that this is a horizontal line. And you can see the little horizontal constraint that automatically pops up if I get close. Um, okay, so I'll accept that and press escape, click on this and press X to make that a guideline. And now I can, you know, kind of by sight here, um, and here's where the grids come in really handy, is I can easily, using the grid markers, kind of determine what the farthest outermost part is. And again, this doesn't have to be super 
super accurate. But I'm going to say that's the widest part of my lower bout right there. Okay. <clears throat> so I want to put one across the waist as well. Let me hide the origin, get that out of the way. So now I'm just going to do uh, a select, control C, control V, which control C, copy, control V, paste. Um, so I made a copy of that line because um, now it's already a construction line, it's the right size, and it's horizontal. So I'm going to move this up to the waist of the guitar. <clears throat> so there's my second guide. Um, now, let's see. Let's do one more guide, and that's going to be where we start to lose symmetry. This looks like a symmetrical body, and uh, maybe a little bit before the waist, we actually start to lose the symmetry. So, again, control C, control V. I've got another line here, and I'm just going to temporarily move that down. This one we're going to come back and edit its position because um, when we start mirroring this, you'll see whether we have something that's symmetrical or not. So I'm going to do an OK there. So we have three horizontal lines. Let's do um, two more vertical lines. So I'm just going to make a line out here. Make sure that it's vertical. And click on it and do an X. So it's construction geometry. And now I'm going to put that. Actually, I'm going to make this a little smaller. I'm going to put that over the kind of the center of this um, lower horn. And now make a copy of that with my control C, control V, and move that horizontally and vertically and try to position that at the center of this upper horn. So right about there. Okay. So we've got our guides um, drawn. So now we can actually start um, making our outline. So that, that's not the sketch that we want to be in, though. We want a outline sketch. So let's finish this one. <clears throat> and we are in a line with the neck plane right now. So we want the flat part of the guitar to be in that same plane. But this edge um, gets carved down, basically. So this edge I measured on my PRS, and it's if I put a uh, straight edge across the flat section and then measure the distance from the straight edge to this carved section, I get 3 sixteenths of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a plane using um, an offset plane. I'm going to select this top plane, which is, let's see, this origin plane right here. And then my offset is going to be negative 3 sixteenths. And so now we have a construction folder, and I'm going to name this um, edge. So that's going to be the plane that holds this edge of this um, guitar body. And it's 3 sixteenths of an inch down from where we have been drawing our guides and such. So now that that is highlighted, when I create a new sketch, it's going to be on that plane. So that's where we want our body outline to be. And you know what? We're in this sketch right now. I'm just going to click and second click and call that our outline. OK. And I think I'm going to call this an outline, too, just so I see if I can rename that. So click once and a second time and call that reference plane outline. OK. So we're in it. we are in our outline sketch right now. And the first thing I want to do is get those guides that we just drew in there. So I'm going to do P for project, and I'm going to select one. Um, let's see. Do we need anything but... I think what we need are these three lines. We need the center line, we need the waist, 
and we need this asymmetry line, and that'll make sense in a second. So we have projected in, and we've got our center and three horizontal lines. So we've got four selected here. So I'm going to project those in. And now I'm going to start by getting a fit point spline and make sure that I intersect with this line here. Now I'm not getting any intersection, so I guess I might have unselected that when I was... Or I guess I didn't select the bottom half of that line. So I'm going to project again, <clears throat> get the bottom half of this vertical line, project that in, go back to my fit point spline, and now I do have an intersection. You can see the X. So that's where I want to start. And I'm going to go to the left. So there's the first point in my spline. And my strategy here is basically, um, you know, you certainly want the apex of a curve. Um, in this case, I think I'm going to do two right here and here. And then I'm going to intersect with the bout purposely make sure I get my X there so that's the use of the bout lower bout guideline and now I also want to basically put um, spline points in where the curvature changes so here I'm going from this outward curve or a right handing facing curve to right now left handed facing curve and here is our um, asymmetry line. So I'm going to end right there. So I'm going to click on that line and end. And so basically if I hit escape and click on this spline, this is what we're going to mirror over to the other side and have a perfectly symmetrical um, bottom of the guitar. But before we do that, I want to do a couple of things on this spline. Right here where it's going to join the other side, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to use my horizontal vertical constraint to make that horizontal. And right here on this point, right where this bout is, I want to make sure that that is vertical. So it looks like it is. I'm trying to apply the constraint and I'm getting a warning that it's already constrained there. If I hover over it, I can see my vertical constraint there. Okay. Eventually, we're going to make this one tangent to the other, but we don't have something to make it tangent to yet, so we can't do that. All right, so next up, we can mirror this side to the other side, but let's take a look at the shape first and see if we like it. Um, I like to first um, move points if it doesn't look good, like this point is a little bit off the guitar. Um, so if I click on this point, I can kind of move the point in any direction and get a, you know, still get a nice curve. You can see right here, this is off the guitar a little bit. So I'm gonna get this handle. Well, first, let, let's move this point. So I'm gonna click on the point itself, move that in a little bit. So now this is a little bit inward of the drawing, or of the photo. So I'm gonna push that out using that handle and maybe tweak this handle just a little bit. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. Um, so I'm going to go to Mirror. I've got one thing selected, so I'm going to knock that off and click on the spline itself. Not a handle, but the entire spline. And then go to Mirror Line, and I can click on this um, center line guide that we have and use that as my Mirror Line, and then do an OK. Now, you see a whole lot of mirror constraints here. I'm going to go over to Show Constraints and turn that off just so we can see what's going on a little bit. And if I highlight this side and then highlight that side, you can see that the photo itself is not truly asymmetric. Um, but let's see what's happening up here. Um, you can see that that's quite a bit away from the symmetry line. And that could probably come in a little bit. So let's see if we can just move this point in. We still have to stay on that line. And now because it's mirrored, it you know it also does the same thing over there. It's a little bit off, but I think that anytime you're using a photo, there's going to be some perspective to it. 
so it's not going to be perfect geometry to trace having you know owning this guitar I'm pretty darn sure that the bottom part of this below this so-called asymmetry line is symmetrical top half certainly is not and that's why we did this in pieces so that we could mirror it over to the other side and get an exact copy okay so let's continue now uh, I'm going to continue on the left side I'm going to make another spline I'm going to make sure that I start here at this asymmetry line and this was the position of the waist you know the the narrowest part of the guitar so I'm going to put a, a point there and then we've got kind of a transition of the curve and I would say another transition point here and now I actually want to get I, I, I want to be on that point right there and I did not project that in so I'm going to hit escape I'm going to lose the work that I did on that spline hit P for project and I'm going to get that guide and that guide and do an OK out of my projection so now I have those points so back into the spline make sure I intersect here make sure I've got a point along this waist um, and we'll get into the purpose of that but basically we're going to make rails at certain points to control um, the carving of this um, edge so I'm going to come right here and here here maybe one close to the top of the horn and then one right at the top of the horn and we're going to continue downward until we intersect with this line so don't want to do too many points um, I think that'll work so I'm intersecting now with my center line and I hit my check mark so here is a separate spline now you can see this is a little rough that's very far away from the the photo um, and these two splines you can see how there's a jaggedness between them I want those to be continuous so I'm going to do a tangent setting um, click on the bottom one first I want this whole spline so I want that spline to be tangent with this spline and now you can see this upper spline change quite a bit and there is a nice flow between that spline and this one okay so now I can use um, my handles here I would say first off I want to move points if, if I have any points that are kind of outside of the photo um, secondly I want to use my handles so I'm gonna stretch this handle Oh, actually I'm in the wrong spline so I'm going to do a control Z a couple of times okay I think it did a control Z too many times okay so I lost my tangency so I'm going to do that again tangent select this spline and there's so many handles here that it's hard to select the spline and now uh, this one's a little easier to select so now we have a, this nice um, transition between the two um, kind of have a gap here so <clears throat> I can mess around with these spline handles quite a bit or another thing I can do is I can click on the spline right click go to insert fit point a spline point and I'm going to click on the line and there's a new point so now if I hit escape I can move that point around and boom I've got something that works really well now here at this point I think I'm gonna move this down a little bit and then I'm gonna go after the handles so I'm gonna click on the spline itself get one of these long handles and see if I can kind of refit that that looks pretty good all right so let's look at the entire spline if you like the curvature then you're good all right so the last thing we have to do is to do this um, 
over the lower horn, a spline that encloses and ends right here in the middle of the neck. So again, go to spline, make sure you're intersecting here. And we like to have one that intersects with the waist and one about halfway up that curve. Then the transition, I'm intersecting the center of this horn, maybe right here at the crest. And now we're heading in the other direction with our curve. And now I'm doing a big long one to intersect there. And I'll do an OK. So first off, we want these two to be tangent to each other. So I hit Escape. I go to my tangent constraint. And again, I've got to be careful to get the spline as opposed to the handle. There is the entire spline right there. And there's the entire spline right there. And you can see now good transition between the two. So you want to do that first. And you also want to do this transition here. So I'm going to click on this spline first. And then this one second. And let's see what we've got between the two. Looks pretty good. Um, remember that this was symmetrical, so we can't move that without moving this side. Um, but I think we have something that's acceptable. So I'm going to finish my sketch, and I'm going to hide the canvas. And I'm just going to hover over this and take a look. Um, we can get rid of our guides. and But remember we projected all of these lines into our outline. So let's go ahead and make those construction so that we can select this entire body at once. Um, so I'm going to go double click on the little icon that is to the left of the name of the sketch. And now all of these projected lines, I'm going to click on it and just do an X. Changing them one by one to construction. Okay. And let's see, the one in the center as well. So those were construction lines in another sketch, got projected into this sketch, and they lose their construction line status, which I'm not quite sure why that happens, but it does. Okay, so we've got a lot of these um, constraint icons showing. So I'm going to um, try to hide those. So I just toggled Show Constraints on and then off again. Um, so now we've got a, a, a more clear picture of the outline. And uh, it looks pretty good. And so we purposely have points on these splines along these um, control lines. And the purpose of that you'll see soon, because that's where we're going to put our rails to control um, the lofting that we're going to do. All right, so I can finish the sketch, and that is our body outline. So the next thing we want to do is to do a flat area on the top of this body um, that's going to be inward from this you know, outline that we have. Uh, so let's go back to the photo. So I'm going to enable the canvas. And I'll show you, um, it's a little bit hard. Oh, it's hard, easier to see now. There's a um, kind of a shadow right here. And I can see this more clearly on my guitar. But basically along here, inward or left of that line, this is a big flat section. Um, and I'm going to ignore this um, hand neck access cutaway um, because we're going to cut that with a different means. So I'm just going to kind of arbitrarily make the flat section kind of come up to here and around kind of like this. And it gets a little tricky here. You can see the flat section goes almost up to the top of that horn and then kind of gets real close here on that inner part of that horn. So um, we want to, you know, make a sketch now on a plane that's contiguous with the top of the neck. So let's go ahead and first hide our canvas and we want to create a new sketch, and we want this 
on either we can select this neck plane or we can select this XY plane um, from the origin. Okay, so now we're 3 sixteenths of an inch above the plane that contains this outline. All right, so I'm going to rotate here to a little bit easier perspective to look at. I'm going to turn on my canvas. And the next thing I want to do is I want to put some of those guidelines back in because I <clears throat> also want these inner curves representing the outer portion of the flat area to correspond with, you know, the points that we put in, for instance, at the um, at the lower bow and at the waist um, and at the top of the horns. So I am going to do a P for project. And if I move this to the side, we should be able to project in all of these guidelines by just hovering over them, clicking, and then doing an OK to finalize the project. So I've got my center line, I've got my outer bout, I've got my waist, I've got my line of asymmetry right here basically the center line, plumb line of the upper horn and the same for the lower horn. So I'm going to project all of those. Um, okay, so now I can trace over the photo and I'm going to do a similar process. I'm going to start with a spline. I'm going to make sure that I'm intersecting with this center line. And now it's a judgment call going down to where this is going to be um, you know, for the flat section. And I can kind of see right there is the start of the flat section. Um, I want to be a little bit looser with the curve coming up here. But again, I want to make sure that I intersect with my bout line. And then I'm kind of turning the corner, following this shadow. Right here, I intersect with this line, intersect with that one curve is turning in the other direction, kind of the middle of a long range here, coming up here. Now here I don't want to go all the way to the top. The flat section kind of ends here it looks like. So I'm going to turn the corner, coming down, and eventually what I want to do is I want to intersect this line here a little bit inside of um, of the outer of the outer perimeter. Okay, so I'm going to stop at the center line and let's first off um, we're going to do what we do what we did with the um, outer line. I'm going to make sure that this is horizontal and I'm going to change this to vertical see what happens there. I actually don't like that. I'm going to undo. Okay. And here I think we're going to start editing points because it looks like I kind of got away from where that flat section is going. See if I can move points around to kind of align to the photo. That looks pretty good. Um, and again, we can come in here and, and change this or, you know, you can spend spend your day modifying this. Um, now we have the same issue that when we projected these lines in, they lost their construction um, status. So I'm going to click on this and do an X on all these guidelines. Just one by one clicking and pressing X. Okay. So now I can hover over and and I, I just wanted to show you there's a half flat section right there. Okay. Now, um, we also want the flat section to be mirrored. So you know what? I kind of screwed up there. I'm going to undo. Well, you know what? I don't want to undo because I, I changed all these guidelines to construction and I that I don't need to undo. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into this 
um, spline and delete it because I only want to go up to the line of asymmetry, which is right here, and then stop the spline and mirror it to the other side. So let's start again, fit point spline. I will start in the same spot and make sure that I intersect with the lower bout. And now I'm going to stop right here. Okay. So let's take a look and see what we got. First, we want to make sure that that's horizontal. And let's, that doesn't look, uh, the curve to that, curvature to that is not real nice. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a point right here where it kind of flattens out. So right click, insert spline fit point, click on the spline, and now I can hit escape and I can move that around. So now I've got a nicer shape there for our inner flat platform. Okay, so now that that exists, I can click on that, I can go to mirror, and go to select our mirror line right here. And now we've got a mirrored shape. And now we actually might want to modify both sides because uh, I'm not still not crazy about the curvature down here. So if I take one point, a point on one side, both sides are going to move. So that's looking pretty good to me. You can see we do kind of get off the drawing here. So... We're just kind of imposing the symmetry of one side to the other. All right, so now we've got the two lower sections done. So let's make another spline. This one we're going to start right here at the end of the previous spline. And start heading up here along the shadow line. And we're not going to go all the way to the edge because there is some curvature from the edge to this flat area. And so the idea here is to get closer and closer, but still not intersect this point. We're going to intersect below it and end our spline there. Okay, so now let's make this left upper bout um, spline, if I can select it here, it's hard getting it without the handles, but there it is. And get my tangent constraint and click on this lower spline. Again, that's hard to select. Here's a, let's see. I'm not able to select that going that way. So let's see, I'll select this first and then go to my tangent and try to select the other. And I'm not able to do that. I'm not sure why. Well, I took a minute outside of the video to see why I can't select the other side. And I think it's because they actually don't intersect the two splines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this bottom one because I've got it mirrored to the other side. So I'm going to select this upper spline and delete it and redo it. But this time when I get my spline tool, making sure that I'm intersecting here. All right. And I also wanted to intersect here. There we go. And then I'll just continue up this shadow line towards the top. And I'm going to intersect this um, vertical line on the upper horn. And turn the corner here. Start down and see if we can go in one fell swoop. No. Nope. Let's get another point here. And then I'm going to make sure I intersect with my center line. Okay. All right. So now you can see this is the entire flat section. Um, 
and let's make sure we have tangency between those two splines. So I'm going to select one of them, go to my tangent constraint, and now I can select the other one because they intersect. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is do some point editing, try to get this a little bit closer to what's actually going on. I can't really tell from this photo whether this is the flat section or that, you know, and this is a rounded section. So I'm actually just going to do something that I think looks good as a flat section. Maybe add a point right here. And then get out of my point adding mode and then I can move the point around. So anyway, that looks pretty good to me. Um, once we, you know, do the actual lofting, you may come back here and um, make some changes, but it looks good. Actually, it's not really curvy here. I'm going to add a point. Then hit escape and move the point and that's going to give me some curvature, which still isn't working. So I'm going to undo that point adding and try to do it with my handles here. So I'm clicking on that point so I can activate this handle. There, there we go. Oops. Oh, you know what? I think this one's stuck at vertical. Can I change? Oh, I can. Okay. Good. All right. Well, that's that's a nicer transition curve. Maybe come down just a little bit here. It's saying I'm intersecting with something. I'm not really sure what I'm intersecting with. Anyway. All right. So that's half of our flat section. We have the lower part over here, so we're going to go get the spline tool again, zoom in and make sure we get an intersection there, and then start about our way here. And have that come up here. This is pretty tight right here. We may end up having a problem. So actually, you know, I didn't want to do that. I'm going to hit control Z to here. Um, I'm going to ignore this cut because we're going to do this in a, in a much more controllable fashion. So I'm going to go up here and then just kind of assume that the flat section does what it does on the other side. Just kind of hitting over there and then intersecting. Okay. So now I want to hit the check mark and that looks okay, but I'm going to hit escape so I can move the points. This one is coincident with this guideline. Um, let's look at the curvature handles here and change that a little bit. There we go. That's a little better. All right. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because this is going to get cut away anyway. But I think I am happy with these two um, profiles that define this flat section. And you can see the flat section comes up almost to the end of that horn and comes up to this part of this horn. And then we'll slice this away in another operation. All right, so we have um, defined an inner surface here and we can now go ahead and do the lofting. So since we're lofting from one profile to another, um, we're going to use a surface loft in the surface tab. So first off, let's finish the sketch and let's name that sketch that we just finished up on. And I'm just going to call that flat. So that's the perimeter around the flat area of the top. Um, so now let's go to our surface tab and we want to do a loft. Let's unselect everything. Okay, so I want to select this outer portion here. So I have to turn my 
my outer my outline sketch on let's start from the left side so I'm gonna pick this line which stops right here because of our symmetry so now I want to add this line to that profile I've got to hold down control to add to a profile as opposed to making another one in this dialog box so hold down control and add that in uh, I'm not sure if that worked. Didn't look like it did. Let me try that again. So there's the first profile. I hold down control and I, okay, that did work now. So I added that second profile, well, added that second line, spline, to this profile. So that's the first profile. I want to loft from that. So now I'm going to another profile. So I'll click here. You can see profile number two. And same thing here. I want to hold down my shift key and add this portion in. Okay, so we should be able to do a loft here, but it's not going to be shaped great. So let's go ahead and do it and see what we get. All right, so if I shut off our canvas, you can see that I've actually got a transition here. Um, let's go ahead and flip this. So I'm going to do a reverse normal. And now we can see the wood grain that we have selected for the whole project. Um, and this just looks like a straight line transition here, which is one issue. It's really not straight line like that. And then when we get out here, we get a pretty steep transition right here that is convex. It's actually concave right here. So what we need to do are define some rails so that we can control how this uh, loft from this outline to our flat section actually works. But before we do that, let's go ahead and define the other side as well. So we're going to turn our flat section and our guide sketches on. We will do another surface loft. And let's see, we're going to pick this and hold down control and pick. So we're adding this second spline to that first profile. Now we're going to the second profile, so I'm just going to click without control. And now I'm going to hold down my control and add that section to it. So it worked as far as... Um, you know, the, we have a loft, but again, same issues here. This is concave instead of convex. This is a straight line transition here. Um, so we're going to fix that with rails. So we're going to come back and edit these features once we define the rails. But we'll leave them in there for now, just so it looks like we're making progress, right? OK. So we can turn our guides. Oh, okay. I guess our guides were projected. That's why we're getting them there. All right. So let's take a look at the top. Swing this around the way we're used to looking at it. OK, here we go. All right, so we want to define rails. One rail is going to be right here, and we can use that for both of these lofts. So let's go ahead and do that one first. Um, let's go back to our solid tab, and we are going to make a construction um, plane and it's going to be you know on this line so in order to do that we are going to show our guides and we're going to pick this line and we're going to do plane at angle with that line selected we can now change the angle of that plane and we want 90 degrees. So now we can draw the profile of this rail, which will control the transition here. OK, so we've made our plane. Let's go ahead and call this um, center line. That's our center line plane. And we are going to make um, a sketch on there. So it's pre-selected go to sketch here we are and what we want to do is we want to start here 
and end up here. Hopefully we have some points we can select from. You see we've got one there. We should have one here. Oh, I see. Our flat uh, sketch was not turned on. Okay, so we want to do a spline from here to here and give it a better shape than this straight line. So I'm going to get my spline tool. I'm going to make sure that it intersects and I have nothing to intersect with. So I'm going to hit Escape. And now what I want to do is I want to project that point and that point in. So I'll hit P for project. I've got that last point selected. I'll go to the first point and I will project those two points in. So now when I go to spline, I can intersect and I can intersect and that's the spline. So initially it is a straight line. So Let's hit Escape and let's get our handles and shape this. So I'm going to hide the body so you can see that a little bit better. Okay. So we're shaping this transition. And so it's a nice subtle rise. But then when it gets towards the top here, I'm going to take this handle and make it longer and bring it down a little bit so that the curve goes the other way towards the flat section. So this right here is going to be our first rail. So let's go ahead and add that to our loft just, just to see what it does and maybe inform us a little bit better um, when we do the additional rails. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to go back to our original loft here, right click and do an edit feature. So this is rewinding the timeline back to this loft and it's still got the two profiles selected but it doesn't have any rails. So can we add a rail here is the question. And the reason we can't is when we went back in time to change this, this sketch did not exist. So there is a way around that. See here's the sketch we just did. So we have to be out here in the timeline to see this sketch. And I'm going to call this um, CL Rail for Centerline Rail. Oops. I thought I was renaming that. CL Rail. OK. No, nope, didn't like it. Maybe it doesn't like the slash. I'll say CL Rail without the slash. Huh not letting me rename that. How about rail one? Okay, that took. I'm not sure. Maybe we were using CL rail somewhere else. Um, not sure why it wouldn't let me. Now it's not renaming it. Huh. Rail one. Enter. And then it's automatically going back to sketch four. I don't know what's going on there. That seems to be a bug to me. But anyway, we'll just refer to it as sketch four then. Rail A. All right, that seemed to hold. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Okay, so here's rail A. Um, this is in a sketch. This sketch, I'm going to move along the timeline if I can. If I can't, we're going to have to go back in time and put it there. So I am not able to do it that way. Let's see if we can take our features here and move them the other way. Nope, not able to do that either. I tell you what, this may be the key here. I am going to activate the top level component so that we can do our timeline manipulation. And now let's see if I click on this sketch which is our rail A sketch, and try to drag that. I still can't do it. OK. All right, so I'm going to go back to my body, activate that, shorter timeline. And I'm going to get rid of this sketch. So I'm going to right click and delete it. Um, and we're going to go back in time now, before the loft, and recreate that same sketch. So we have to. Well, the other thing is we've got a 
um, plane that doesn't exist at this point. So let's see if we can manipulate where this plane is in the timeline. And I'm not having any luck doing that either. So, oops, let's see. No. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete the plane and I'm going to go back in time before my surface loft. And I'm going to do two things. I'm going to create a plane. So we have this line to use. So I'm going to do a plane at angle at this line. Go to 90 degrees. So here's our plumb plane. And I'm going to call this CL for center line. OK. And the purpose of making that is we're going to create a sketch on there right now. So we'll create sketch, select the plane as our sketch. And now we've got to see, do we have what we need if we turn on our outline sketch um, to go from our outline to our inner? Can we go from here to here? And it looks like we can. So we want to do a, a, a spline essentially from this point to that point. So I'm going to get my spline tool and I'm going to start here. But now with the spline tool enabled, we can't grab those points like last time. So I'll hit escape and I will specifically select those two points. So click, shift click, and then I'm going to do P for project. I've got two selected. So those points now should be selectable because I projected them into the sketch we're working on. So I go back to fit point spline. I can now intersect there and there. I hit the check mark. And now hit escape. And we are going to manipulate these handles so this transition looks a little bit more accurate. And you can see that it rounds its way towards the top and it's kind of scalloped on the bottom. So that's good for now. That is our rail. Let's finish the sketch. See if now if we can rename this. We're going to call this rail A. OK, so now the sketch in our timeline exists before this lofting feature. So we are going to edit that feature. Um, and we don't see our body, so I'm going to turn the bodies on. OK, so that's the loft that was done. And you can see below the loft, here's our rail. And we want this loft to take the shape of this rail. This rail is going to guide the loft from this line to that line. OK, so all we have to do is right click on this, do an edit feature, and basically do an add down here in the rail section and click on that. And you can see now that, you know, that surface got bent along the rail. So it's very nice. Um, and it's fine until we get around here where this now takes a kind of a convex position and it's really concave. So let's go ahead and OK out of that. Um, and I'm going to flip this surface. So I'm going to go to surface and I'm going to reverse normal so that we see our wood grain here. And now it's a little bit easier to see. So what we've got going on here is fine. You know, we could tweak this a little bit more to control that, but um, really no issue. The issue here still exists that when we get down here, um, oh, you can see it's really kind of cutting down on itself. It's really misformed here. And so we want this steeper section, or narrower section anyway, to be concave instead of convex. So we can probably make a rail um, at a convenient location. And I think I would do this right at the line of symmetry so that I can use this rail on both sides. And then maybe do another rail up here. So this rail is probably going to flatten out between, you know, convex to concave. And then this one will be concave down here. So two more rails, but remember, we're going to go back in time and we're going to um, make sure that our timeline is rewound before our, our surface lofts. So this was the first rail we did. 
we will make another sketch just after that. So we're going to make that on the um, asymmetry line, which is right here. So I'm going to select the line. Let's go to our solid tab and do a plane at angle. And let's see, where is our angle here? We've got our line selected. I'm not seeing our, oh, there's our control. Okay. So now if I put this at 90 degrees, I'll type in negative 90. Um, that's where we want to sketch on. So that's essentially a cross section right there that we can put the rail at. Okay. So we've got our plane. Let's call this um, ASEM. So two clicks there to rename. That's our asymmetry line. Okay, so we are going to create a sketch for another rail, and we'll call that rail asim. Uh, okay, so we're going to do a new sketch. We've already pre-selected this plane. Let's create a sketch. And now there's a lot of points here. we got to figure out what's what and which one do we want to use. So let's get a little bit off of plane normal. And but our plane is if we turn our asim plane that, that would be helpful to kind of see this. So we want to go from this point to this point. So we're probably going to have to project those points in. So I'm going to hit P for project. I'm going to select that point and that point and project those. And now we can get our spline tool and go from here to here and hit the check mark. Okay, that's just a straight line. So what we kind of want, actually, you know what, let's, let's leave that as a straight line. So this, you know, we've got this rail right here, which has this downward and then upward shape. This one, which initially, well, let's give it, I shouldn't have said that. Let's give it a little bit of shape here. So we're giving it a little bit of concave shape and we can give it a little bit of convex shape here so sort of like the other rail but a little less defined okay so we'll finish that sketch and then we should be able to mirror this rail to the other side shouldn't we so we're we're going to do two of those rails inside this sketch so we're going to call this the asim or rail dash asim okay and let's go back in there so we're going to double click on this little icon right here to edit it and we're going to get this piece and we're going to do a mirror along a center line which is right here are we able to select this no, we're not. Are we able to select a origin line? Well, if we can see them, I think yes. So here's an origin line. Is I able? Okay, I actually used this origin plane and that allowed me to flip. If that didn't work, you could always project in this center line. Okay, so we have a rail on the other side now. Okay. So we're going to add those two rails in, but let's go ahead and do our last two rails here and here. And those will be two different planes. So we'll have the rail for the upper horn and the lower horn. Um, so let's finish this sketch. Let's turn that construction plane off so we can see what we're doing. And we're going to define two planes here, upper horn here, lower horn here. So. Let's do a plane at angle, click on the line, go to 90 degrees, hit enter, and we're going to call that upper, upper horn. And do the same thing here. Select the line, plane at angle, type in 90, press enter, and this is the lower horn 
Again, we're doing those construction planes simply to be able to sketch our um, profile of the transition from this outer to inner contour lines. Okay, so now we got to make two sketches. Um, so before things get out of control here, let's rename this previous sketch. And this was the one that we did at the ASIM line. Okay. And now we're going to create a new sketch. Let's pre-select this plane at the upper horn. Create a sketch. And now again we have to figure out where those points are. So let's get a little bit off normal. And here's our line. So these are our two points um, that we want to project. So we'll hit P for project. Click on this point and that point and project it. Now we can go to our spline and click here, he says. Yeah, there it is. Click here and here. End our spline. Now it's just a straight line. So with this, I'm going to hit Escape so that I can modify the handles. Here I'm going towards this transition, which is this concave transition. And so hopefully, that's all we need. We may need to put another one in a little bit back here or maybe even change this profile of this rail, but we're trying to do this with as few rails as possible. You can add rails wherever you want, but I would suggest using these guidelines as a position for rails. It just makes it a lot easier to make sure you're connecting the right points. Okay, so that rail is in there. We're going to call that upper horn, finish the sketch, rename the sketch to upper horn. And now we're going to go to the lower horn and do the same thing. Pre-select the construction plane, create a sketch. So now we know we're on that. I'm actually going to come around and look at it from the other side. Um, so here's the line that that um, sketch is on right here. So I believe these are the two points. So I'm going to do a project and click on that one, click on that one, project those two points into our sketch. And now just do a single spline, oops, spline tool, intersect there, intersect there, end the spline. And now it's just a matter of changing those handles. Um, you know, and if you were real precise, you could make these handles the same angle and length as this one over here. I'm not going to go to that extent. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it so it sort of has the same shape. Oops. There we go. Okay. All right. So we're going to finish that sketch and we're going to call it lower horn. Okay, now we have done all of those sketches before our existing feature here. So let's move the timeline out after that um, surface loft that we did. Let me get it in position here. I think that's upside down. Surface loft that we did on the left side. Okay, I am going to Go back to the surface tab. Oh, here's where we flipped it. Okay. So I'm moving along the timeline and we flipped our surfaces. We reverse normaled to use fusion terminology. Um, so we can see wood grain on this side and that yellow color on the other. Okay. So now you see how we've already put this rail in, but we have not put the other two rails in. So we're going to edit this feature, right click on it in the timeline, and we've got one rail, so we're going to add a rail, and that's the rail we want to add. And then we're going to do another plus here to add a third rail, and come around here and select this rail. Okay. Now, let's take a look at our shape. Now we're getting what we want. Now we have a nice convex, I'm sorry, concave area around this upper horn. 
and kind of middle of the road here. And then down here, we have this concave um, transition. So that's actually very close to what this PRS guitar does. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's get that going on the other side now. So the other side, we had another surface loft. Um, I'm not sure what this reverse normal was all about. So I'm going to right click and delete that in the timeline. But here's our next surface loft. It does not have any rails yet. So I'm going to right click, edit the feature, and we're going to add. First off, we're going to add this same rail here. We're sharing that same rail. So I'm going to go to the rail section, hit plus, and then we're able to select that rail. So you see that change the shape there to match the other side, which is great. Um, now we've got to find our other rails. Don't we have a rail here somewhere we, that we mirrored over? Um, oh, we want to make sure that we've got our sketches turned on. So that was in our ASIM sketch. So that's now visible. We can now select that second rail. And if we go up here to our third rail, right on the top of the horn, I can click on that. Where is it? Right there. Oops. Now that's giving us an error. So let's see what's going on there. Um, rails do not intersect all profiles. Okay, so maybe we did a poor job of making this rail. I'm hoping that's all that happened here. Let's kind of zoom in on it and see if we're not actually on that. The red shows the error. So this point right here is the error, and it's saying that this point is not on this profile. Sure looks like it is to me, but let's see if we can try to add it again. All right, let's make sure there's nothing. Let's try that whole procedure again. So I'm going to right click, edit feature, and I'm going to add this rail. So I go down to the rail section, hit plus, add this rail. That worked fine. Then we go to the ASIM rail. We've got to make our ASIM and horn sketches visible. So now we can add the second rail that shows up here in the dialog box. All is well so far. And let's see if we can add this one. Oh, that worked. <laughs> okay, I didn't do anything different, I thought, but maybe I misselected that. Okay, so now I can hit OK and all as well. And we have our nice transition. We have our concave here at the top of the horn. We have kind of middle of the road here. And then down here at the butt end of the guitar, we have this flattened transition. So the next thing we need to do is to uh, basically fill in this top surface here. So again, we're in the surface tab. We are going to use the patch feature for that, which is right here. And this should be pretty straightforward. I can just hover over that, basically that um, flat section um, sketch. Click on that. And that looked like that worked in the preview. So I'm going to click OK. So now we have a continuous surface body. Let's look at our bodies folder and see what we got. We've got three. We've got this. Oh, let me hide. Let me show them once. I'm going to hide them all. Here's our left side. Here's our right side. And here's the flat top. So on the bottom side, we don't have a flat section yet. So let's do one more patch. And I'm going to go to the patch tool and I'm going to hover over this. Essentially, I guess this is the outside sketch. And that looked like that filled in as well. Okay. So now I'm going to hide all the sketches, take a look and see what we've got. We have a very thin slice, 3 16 of an inch cap that has the proper profile on it all the way around, um, except for the access cut here, which we're going to do in a separate operation. Um, but this needs to be a different thickness. Um, so I'm actually going to measure that on my guitar right now. So that cap turns out to be a half an inch on my guitar. So I've already got three sixteenths. Um, 
So I'm going to extrude this down once we turn this into a solid body. And I think we can turn this into a solid body right now. All we have to do is stitch these four bodies together. So I'm going to go to the stitch command. I'm just going to drag a rectangle through everything. That is simply selecting these four bodies. And then do a stitch. And if all works well, the surface body uh, transitions itself into a solid body, which it did. Um, so now we can go back to the solid tab. And I am going to do an extrude on this. So I'm going to extrude, select the bottom surface, go downward. And so this was going to be a half an inch, but we've already got 3 sixteenths. So this is going to be 13 sixteenths extrusion. And there is our cap. All right. So now we can do yet another extrude and maybe make that a different body. We're going to call this cap. And then we'll call the other side base. So now we need to know, um, you know, what is the thickness of the entire body. So I just spent a minute measuring my guitar and the entire thickness of the body, including this cap, turns out to be 1 and 13 sixteenths. But I think in this model I'm going to make that 1 and 3 quarters because I am going to produce this guitar and it'll just be uh, a lot easier to, you know, mill pieces of wood uh, to, you know, easier to remember dimensions. Um, but looking at this, I think I screwed up the cap. This cap is wicked thick. Um, it should be a half an inch. So a total of a half an inch from this flat surface to this bottom flat surface. Um, I'm going to go back in and edit my feature. And yes, I did screw this up. So this should be 5 sixteenths. And then it gets the additional 3 sixteenths up here. Um, let's see, that's going to be joined. So that should work. OK, that looks better. So now I want to do an extrude. And I want to end up with one and three quarters, but I've already got five sixteenths. So let's see, that's 12. So I need one and seven sixteenths. So I'm going to do an extrude. Now this I don't want to join. I might want to make this a new body because we're going to have two different species here. And I'm going to put in one... Let's see my dimension here. One and five sixteenths. Is that right? We did one and three quarters overall. No, I need one and a quarter here. Okay. All right. So there's our two bodies. One of them should be, if I click on this line right here, inch and a quarter. And now I want to go from this. I'm going to hide this body. I want to go from this surface. I'm going to measure from this flat surface to this flat surface. And I get a half an inch. So half inch plus inch and a quarter is an inch and three quarters. So that's what I want. Um, so I can show this body now. And I'm going to call this the base. So I'm going to rename that body. All right. And then one last thing. We're just going to go in and change the species of this top. So I'm going to select the base. And I'm going to hit A for appearance. And I've already got a walnut here. So I'm going to drag that walnut on top of the base. Oops. I didn't want to do that. Control Z. I'm going to undo that and do another appearance. Drag the walnut to the cap instead. And close. OK. And hide our origin. All our sketches are hidden. All our construction is hidden. Let me collapse our, our browser. And there is our nicely contoured top in a second species. Um, so in the next video, we're going to handle the rounding over of
this bottom and we're going to put a belly cut in and then eventually we'll get into cutting the neck into the body and cutting the pickup cavities and we'll be along our way. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that.